till Twitch tells me I'm online. I meant to sound like an anchorman, but I sound like Oscar the freaking Grouch. So, all right, uh, Twitch tells me we're now online, so I'll stop doing silly voices and start doing silly programming. Okay, um, previously I made a mistake. Um, I should have married her sister, and I've been working on that joke for like four hours, and I don't think it still came out right. Uh, the actual mistake I made was um, I said that the Q position was not the origin anymore uh, because we moved things around, and that is not correct. The Q position is still the origin uh, because we have not actually moved any coordinates. Um, but the thing I was wrong about is we're not looking for the vector from uh, the Q to the Q position, which would be 0, 0, 0, the null vector. We're actually looking at the... Um, let's see if we can get, get back there now. We're actually looking for... I like the spinning thing. But that's what we're looking for. Uh, what we're actually looking for is, let's see, where are we here? We are in, nope, we're actually, I think we are in here. Um, so Q is uh, in, at the origin. These uh, coordinates here are, are fictitious. What we're actually looking for, though, is the is the uh, vector from P to Q, P to the origin. And that vector uh, going in this direction will be negative P. So what we really want is VSEP of negative P uh, and PT. Or so we're actually, sorry, th this vector here, which... Um, PT is its length. I think we actually have constructed it at one point. I think that's the umbral. Uh, actually, is it? Hang on. So this is the umbral point. The vector PT is, or I guess it's the same as the vector ST, the umbral vector. Again, it's the same direction, and we're only looking for angles, so we're okay. Um, so I think over here, um, we're, we're good up to the point here where we say umbral angle. And let me go ahead and really quickly push this uh, bad code to get. Um, because it, it compiles. And remember, if code compiles, you should push it to get, pretend that it does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so we don't really need, um, we, we, where Q is with respect to P, all of this is going to be incorrect from here on out. Um, so let's go ahead and say, so we know the umbral angle, and we know, um, we know that the position to P, the position um, to Q, because Q is the origin, is negative p. We want to do that pt dot, well, well, pt angular separation with negative p. But we can't quite do that because I don't think we have pt in here anywhere. Um, that's the distance. We've got to be really careful here. That's also a distance pt. And I think the umbral vector is in the same direction. So we actually want it with the um, uh, umbral vector and negative p. One way we could do this is we could, and, and the negative p is, of course, negative the umbral point. One way we could do this is create a new vector that negates the umbral point. Um, so this computes the umbral point. And let's see. That negates the umbral point. Um, but another way to do it is just remember that VSEP, because it takes a dot product, is in, uh, so we, you know, just very quickly here we have, if A, B, C dot X, Y, Z equals something then negative a, negative the, the, the inverse vector, as it were, negative b, negative c, and really I shouldn't be putting this like this, in with the x, y, z, c, it's going to equal to negative something. Um, so the, the general concept here is um, the vector separation. <coughs> um, actually, hang on. Oh, wow. Yeah, the dot products will be the negatives of each other, but since cosine... Is an um, is an even function, isn't? It? Let's see, cosine of pi over two, cosine of negative pi over two. Um, I'll be darn. So actually, I think I don't think the angle will change. Something tells me I'm a little bit wrong about this, um, but I maybe not. So the the angle we're looking for is actually between here p and t, or you know this the st vector, and p to q, which is negative p. But I think it's going to be the same as the angle between. And boy, I really don't want to say that. Um, and yet, the cosine, our cosine will be the same. So let's go with that. Let's go with that. Let's say it's going to be uh, the vector separation um, v sep c between the umbral point and the umbral vector. And this is definitely a commutative. So, so this is going to be our angle q. This is going to be the angle uh, that uh, the uh, the center of the umbral cone forms with the point uh, that we're looking at, but there's a there's an issue here. Um, 
this is only what it looks like to the center of Q. And now we do have a nice little diagram that should hopefully show us what... Uh, no, not that one. Uh, yes. The problem is this is actually giving us the angle uh, that we're calling U here between... Um, what the, well, this would be the umbral vector, the middle of the umbral vector, and this. We actually also want to get the... Um, do we have like a... Wow, I don't have a... I don't have a um, little table here that tells me... Um, what these values are, which is strange because I'm pretty sure I did do that. Stand by, please stand by. That's the penumbra, that's the inumbra. What the hell's the inumbra? That doesn't even make sense. All right, stand by. We're gonna figure this out. Enough of Mr. Spinny thing. Sorry, we'll have to leave you, Mr. Spinny thing. So let's go ahead and load up the. Um, I, I'm sure I have it on one of these. So let's go ahead and load up one of these. Open. Penumbra, 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 umbra, umbra two. That's the, pe the. We will get back to the penumbra for sure. I'm trying to find the one where we have. Um, did I accidentally get rid of it somehow? Where we have the QR and the QY. I guess it may be this one. Um, umbra two. Nope. So it is it is this, but maybe I somehow overwrote that. I apparently overwrote that with this. So I should probably do a save as on this. Wow. Um Unfortunately if I save I think I'm gonna overwrite the other one. Um All right, we're going to call it Inumbra 2, I guess. And so, th so the, the, the idea here is we know that we know this vector u is the one we're uh, the angle u is the one we're calculating, calling it angle q. Uh, that's the one between the central vector of the um, the central vector of the uh, of the cone and the position to uh, the the center of the planet. The important quantity here, which we I should have been noting down at some point. Um, is this angle v, which is how how f much further um, you know the angle deviation between uh, the middle of the uh, the middle of the object Q and its and its sides, we, because we care about whether any of object Q is in in there, and that angle is um, the sine of it is going to be uh, let's see opposite over hypotenuse. It's going to be QR over PQ, and in this case because Q is zero, it's going to be a QR over the norm of P. Um, why am I not happy with this? Because we don't know this length. All right. So arc sine of QR over PQ. QR over PQ. Okay. And we can get to that. So let's see. We have um, this is the angle Q mid. And then spice double angle Q delta. In other words, how far we can go from angle Q plus or minus uh, for the whole, to get all of Q, not just a little part of Q. And that is going to be the arc sine of QR, which we do have, because we computed that earlier, and PQ, which is just going to be the V. No oh, shit, let's see. Um. Yeah, the umbral... Oh, that is the umbral point. Yeah, sorry. That is the umbral point. V norm C of um point. I'm pretty sure I've done something wrong here, so let's uh, quickly... Let's quickly see what we're doing here. Okay. Um, so we have the radii. We have the positions of S and T re relative to Q. Q is at the origin. Um... We compute the umbral vector as the vector between S and T. Um, and this is the distance. It's the v-norm of the umbral vector. And now we compute the distance from, the, uh, from T back to here, P. Um, and then this is where we find the umbral point P. This is going to be the umbral point P. Again, these laxes are just not really there. 
In fact, I should probably get rid of them entirely. Um, because Q is still at the origin. So that's fine. Um, and we define the umbral point. We worry about it being bigger than one, but we don't really care. The umbral angle is this angle U that says how wide the umbra is. And then we measure angle Q, which is, okay. The angle between P and Q, which is negative P, although if it comes this way, I guess we're okay. Um, between this vector and this vector, and something tells me that I'm, I'm not doing this right. Um, because I am getting um, this angle and this angle. I really want this angle and this angle. Now I think we can show though that um, one of them is pi minus the other one. Um, so I think this is actually not VSEP, but this is going to be um, pi minus VSEP. And I could be very wrong about that. Um, so we're going to check our results, of course. And then um, Angle Q, so this is the uh, this is where we go back to this other diagram. Um, of course, that's just this angle here, uh, what we're calling angle U. But of course, the uh, disk Q goes all the way from U minus V to U plus V. So we compute V as the angular Q delta. And then we give our results as a U, but let's see if we can do a little bit. Let's see. Um, angle umbra, angle Q, and then... Um, we'll just call it angle delta, which is angle Q delta. And I think we're going to be a little bit nice here by um, putting these in, <coughs> excuse me, um, in degrees. So this is um, over pi times 180. I, I was wishing there was a nice way to do this, and there probably is. Maybe I declared a constant or something, but I, whatever. Right now, we're just going to say over pi c times 1. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, there is one. Um, yeah, they already have a DPR and a, a PRC, so hang on. Stand by, stand by, stand by. Let's go ahead and do this correctly now. Number of angles in radians, so if we do uh, degrees per radian, we will get um, it in degrees. Degrees per radian. And degrees per radian. Okay. Um... Let's see. Yeah, right now this is, um, we actually want to see whether, uh, we want to see, well, I guess, oh, hang on, let's see, the umbral point, the umbral angle, um, yeah, we, we want to see if any part of angle Q plus or minus angular delta is with between uh, negative uh, um, and positive um, in the, within the umbral cone, in other words. Um, all right, let's see if this even bothers to compile. No, it does not. Q pause undeclared. Oh, well, what the hell am I doing there? Don't want to do that. One more time. No need to print out zeros. Okay. Too many arguments for format. Oh. It would be nice if we actually printed angle delta instead of just like leaving a space to print it and not doing anything with it. So let's do that. And let's see if we can now... Booyah! I don't know what that means. Um, okay. So now we can look for the word eclipse, even though we've decided that maybe uh, we don't really know what we're talking about there. And maybe this will now give us the lunar eclipse, but if it doesn't, um, we, we can do a little bit of drawing here. So this is still June 21st, so we're still getting a solar eclipse when we want a lunar eclipse. Uh, not great, but, um, and this is giving us a time of 522, um, which is really just not, not in there at all. Okay, so let's see what we're doing wrong here. The sun position, um, T position, umbral vector, umbral point, yeah, let's see. Um, so that actually seems somewhat reasonable there. Yeah, I think, I like the fact that almost all of these x values are very close to zero, which may have something to do with the, uh, 
the spring equinox or something. But the nice thing is we can now look at the YZ plane. And the way we do that is we bring up yet another um, one of these stupid things. Um, hopefully not rewriting over something we've already done like it did previously. And so this is going to be the X. Um, this is going to be the uh, YZ plane. So we're going to call this Y. And I think, can we go freehand here? I'm just going to go sort of crazy with it. Um, and I don't know if this one has a freehand option, so I can just sort of do it, man. Let's see. Wow. Lots of stuff I don't understand. Um, um, nope, didn't want to do that. Is this the freehand sketcher? No. That just tells me what's on the, the thing. Okay. Well, crappity crap. Alright, so the sun is going to be at point, and this is going to be the x and this is going to be the y. So point 0.92, point 0.40. Now something tells me this is not going to work out. Um, I guess I could zoom in a little bit so we can have just... Um, we're going to remain within one uh, astronomical unit of Earth. And actually, I guess the zero point here is the moon. Um, okay, that's actually not too bad. Okay, let's take a quick look here and remember what the frip we're doing. Okay. So we're... Uh, wow, that was weird. Um, so we're observing from the moon. So we're looking for lunar eclipses. The sun is the light source, and the thing that's doing the shadowing is our planet, the Earth. So, clearly, whatever we're doing here, it's, it's very, very wrong. Okay. Uh, so, the sun wants to be at 0 0.92, 0 0.40. See if we can put a point there. Ooh, right about there. Okay. That's the sun. The um, T would be the Earth here, because Q is zero, the moon's at zero. This would be at minus point oh oh two comma minus point oh oh one. So right there, kind of. And the moon is right there. So really, we've already messed something up. Um, oh, and have we taken the... Okay, I think we've taken the condition we said we were going to try to avoid, which is where uh, something ends up over here, which is definitely not the umbral cone, but it looks like it's the umbral cone because it's still within the, the correct angles. So I think what we have, uh, we have failed to do here is uh, omit the points where the distance between P and, um, well I guess the norm of P, let's see. Um, so we want to make sure that the distance between P and Q is less than the distance between P and T. Um, and if that doesn't happen, uh, we ha there's no point in computing because uh, if Q is further out than this, in other words, it's like out here or something, it's not. There's not. It's not going to be within the umbra. So that is the point. We even had a little note, I think, uh, to uh, to uh, to compute it. Let's see if we did have that note. Um, yeah, make sure umbra planet is within correct distance. So we have that note. Let's go ahead and do it now. Um, so that, that's important. Okay. Let me see if anyone's actually watching this chat, because it makes me nervous. Quite a few people are, but I don't know if they're bots, people, or just uh, people who randomly accidentally fell asleep on this channel. Okay, so for this to be correct, we need the um, PQ to be greater than PT. And again, PQ and PT, we're going to say that formally. Um, no, actually, sorry, we need PQ to be less than PT. If it's bigger than, we have a problem. Uh, so V norm, C of um, the umbral point, which is in relative to Q, is greater than the distance PT, which we've computed. So if Q is, like, over here somewhere, um, I think... 
we don't really want to print anything. Um, so let's see if that does anything for us. Probably not. Oh, well, at least it compiled. Always a good sign. Okay. Now let's see if there's any cases where I have an eclipse. We do not. Um, and that might actually, because there are no total eclipses of the moon um, in 2020, I think. Um, but now let's see if this is any better here. 1122 uh, on May 26th, and I think there was actually an eclipse then. So, um, so we can go over here. And I'm sure there is one on oh dear. And I think that's May 26, 2021, if I'm looking at that correctly. It is, because there are none this year. So let's see. Um, are we in... Um, okay, well, let's, let's go further here. This might be excessive. Eclipses in 2020, eclipses May 26th. Here we are. Okay. And we should have over here our uh, penumbral and so forth states. So we're saying here at 1122 we enter the... Uh, well, we sh I shouldn't say we enter. Um, because there was an entry before that that said we were in the eclipse. So let's take a quick look at that er earlier entry. We might be able to nail this right on the spot here. And I think the eclipse thing comes before, I think it comes after everything, which is a terrible place to, to put it. Um, but that's how it is right now. So this right here is where we would think maybe um, something's happening. And that time is 1022 in the morning, May 26th, 2021. Um, and why do I have my library window up? We don't need this. Okay. We're saying 1022, these guys are saying uh, not 1022 is not quite where we want to be there. Um, 944 is when the partial eclipse begins. Um, 847 is when the penumbral. So this is not looking great. But that's okay because I think right now uh, the way we have the, uh, the program set up, we, we're just doing a search for something ridiculous. Um, so what do we want to, um, so what are we saying here about the ang uh, umbral angle and it's 0.26, the Q angle is 0.25, the delta. So it actually, uh, it looks like even before this happened, uh, I have no idea how what we're doing here actually. Let's see, that's a, two lines, that's a jump of like an hour. Um, because right now this thing is just returning negative nine. This is returning a r ridiculous quantity. Let's see if we can return a quantity that is more... No, let's not do that. Let's... Let's go ahead and return... Let's go, go ahead and like return for every minute or something starting here. Since we are just experimenting after all. Okay. So da 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 da. -da. Read them. Uh, get the um, get the body IDs. Um, excuse me. Um, so here, uh, start and end times for a window. Do I care? No. Oh, apparently something's been changed. Oh yeah, because I keep touching the file. Um, Okay, and now we're just going to basically, because we, we clearly don't have uh, this GFQ stuff set up, we're just going to test basically every minute starting at, oh, I don't know, this time sounds good. That's the Unix time, of course, we've got to be careful. Um, for i equals that, i less, th we're going to go for about a day, which is... Um, Hmm. I wonder. Uh. Yes. 
maybe. All right, so we're going to say uh, 1,440 times 60 seconds, uh, but we're going to increment by 60. So this should be like a 1,400, you know, print out 1,440 times, and the, the thing we're going to call, of course, is Eclipse Around the World. Did, did I capitalize the... Okay. Um, actually, that returns a double. Eclipse Around the World. Uh, and of course our spice ET will be unix2 ET of the unix time. And then, um, I think we just made that, um, sun ID, planet ID, uh, moon ID. And we need to pass it a third parameter that we have there, but we're not really using it. Okay, let's see what this sucker does. Once again, not tremendously excited, but let's see what it does. Um, yep, I probably need to declare i to be an, at the very least an int. I could probably declare it to be a float. Okay. Could even declare it to be a spice int if I wanted to, but this should be fine. Make, awesome, run. Um, Okay, not great that we're getting Eclipse, like, right at the beginning of this time frame. Um, did I choose the wrong time frame? 10.22, and the Eclipse supposedly starts at... Oh, the partial begins at... Okay, so I did choose the wrong, wrong time. Uh, let's just go ahead and bump this back by a day. Um, like that. And we'll clean this up quite a bit once we once I'm convinced that it's actually doing something useful. Okay, so Eclipse, the very first time we get the Eclipse is going to be at this Unix time. And that's 1019. And according to this, um, no, that's not even, that's not good at all. 1019, there's nothing there going on. Oh yeah, because of course I'm not looking at the, um, yeah, let's see. So at 10.19, what's going on here is... Um, I'm going to put Eclipse at the top. I don't like it where it is. Um, because it's really, really confusing. Uh, that should be better over here. Okay. And let's see. Angle Q. Yeah. And that really should be angle Q minus the uh, angle delta for Q. Because um, if that's less than the umbral angle, at least part of it is now in the, uh, in the eclipse cone. So we will say angle Q minus angle Q delta. Now the problem here is... Um, um, we will need to deal with the modding by 2 pi. And we will put a message, although we ignored our last message. We do want to mod by 2 pi so we can get our circle, because, it, for example, 361 degrees is the same as 1 degree, and we need to know that. All right, let's see if this works any worse. Can't be better. No, um, or the opposite. Okay. All righty, so the eclipse here, I think this is a different, every time we get a new number, I'm a little bit excited that we might get the right number. It's like winning the lottery. 0946, and that's actually pretty good. That says the partial eclipse begins at 946, that's very nice, meaning uh, there's some part of the moon that is now experiencing a total solar eclipse. The penumbral eclipses are not really visible because the sun's pretty bright even with part of it dimmed. It's only if all of the sun is dimmed that this happens. So now, I've got to find the first place, oh, 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 hang on, that wasn't too bad actually. So we have Eclipse, 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 Eclipse. And then right over here, we don't have an Eclipse anymore. And that's 1251-ish, 1252-ish. <whistles> Very nice. We've nailed this. Okay. So now we have the correct type of Eclipse, the Lunar Eclipse. Uh, we have the correct start and end time. 
um, for where a partial eclipse is, meaning the moon is seeing a so solar eclipse somewhere. Um, now let's boogie down and flip these variables and watch it totally fail for solar eclipses. Um, but also I probably need to, um, let's see. So this is going to be like umbral data or something eventually. Um, what do we want to return here? Um, let's see. Well, let's see. Hmm. All right, we're going to cheat a little bit more here. And we are going to go through the... Wait, the... How many minutes are there in here? Like 525,000 something? And I'm tempted to go through all of them just for fun. Um, and my temptation is increasing, and my temptation has increased to the point where... Um, so this is zero hours. This is like about uh, 26 hours ago. And that is the time that is the number of seconds there. We're going to go through the entire year one minute at a time. Um, this won't be maybe as bad as we think it will be because um, uh, because I'm going to try to skip over the cases where there's no eclipse. Uh, let's see, so plus um, 86,400 seconds per day times 366 days this year. Yeah, let's do it one minute at a time. I'm going to regret that. Okay. And then over here back in BC Lib, however, um, we're just going to drop out of the function if it's not an eclipse of some sort. So let's see what this does. Compiles. Now, if I'm correct, in this case, we're going to get very little in terms of results. Yeah, this was this was a mistake. Um, nice, because there are no lunar total lunar eclipses. Now there are there is an annular solar eclipse, so we should see something out of this. Um, then again, maybe we won't. <gasps> Gasp. Let's see what this is. This is. December 14th of 2020. Is that really the only eclipse we have? That seems unlikely. Okay. Yeah, this should have picked up the annual eclipse of June 21st, though. That's kind of bad that it didn't. The fact that it did pick up the December 14th eclipse is amazing, though. 1433 is when something happens, like the total eclipse begins or something. Um, very nice. Very nice. Full eclipse begins then. And then let's just keep this going until this eclipse ends. According to this, that should happen at this point in time. 1754. Gorgeous. Um, so yeah, it looks like this is, this is now... We're going to test a lot more, but this looks like it's now starting to make a little bit of sense. Um, so now what we have here is angle Q is the central angle. Uh, we do need to, mo and then angle Q plus or minus angle Q delta tells us, um, tells us what parts of the, uh, what parts of the planet are in the umbra. Uh, so if, um, let's see. Um, So if angle Q minus is less than the umbral angle, um, that's actually, I'm not sure that's actually correct though. Hang on. Um, if angle Q minus angle Q delta is less than the umbral angle, actually that means there's not a total eclipse, but there still could be a partial eclipse, meaning an eclipse somewhere on the, um, somewhere on the on the surface of the moon uh, sorry a total eclipse somewhere on the surface of the earth 
but not everywhere on the earth. And yet this doesn't look like that's what it's saying. So, um, so, so this is, I think we can now rename this function umbral data. We're still not going to do anything with it really useful. Um, let's see, light generating object, eclipsing object, and eclipsed object, flag value, okay. Um, do we actually have a function called umbral data? Separation data, min corner eclipse, separation data. Um, yeah, I don't know how many of these functions are actually that useful anymore. Here it is, umbral data. And what does this do? Oh, this actually supposedly returns all the stuff we want. Um, I don't believe it for a second, though. Uh, umbral point, umbral point, umbral point. Uh, SR times... Um, Hmm. I don't think this is the same thing. Oh, right. Plus, this actually requires that we pass in um, S and T as positions, not as values. Um, so we're probably going to have to do a little bit of... There's probably quite a bit of stuff we can get rid of here. Um, and right now, this doesn't actually return anything useful. So we're going to kind of have to decide what we what it is we want to return here. Um, compute position of S and T with respect to Q. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I guess right here at this point we have to make our decision uh, what it is we want to return. Um, so we have angle Q, umbral angle. Um, so if angle Q and the umbral angle is plus or minus, so if angle Q plus um, angle delta is equal or greater than the negative umbral angle, we are in the beginning of a partial eclipse. Um, yeah. Angle Q plus angle Q delta. Uh, right. That means the very top of the planet has started to be become eclipsed. So, so let's see. Um, so let's go ahead and actually, and we will be careful to, okay. So if angle Q plus angle Q delta, and I think this actually says the exact same thing, um, is greater than negative um angle, or angle Q minus angle Q delta is less than um angle. So in other words, the southern or northernmost tips of the thing are touching. Um, we can do the same thing we did here. And if not, we can just return a nonsense value for right now. Okay, so I think this is actually the correct condition that we were looking for. Uh, this condition is... Um, that's only half the condition we needed. This is the other half of the condition we need. Um, I think. Alright. Once more into the breach. Um... Oh, it's just ang Q delta because I didn't want to make my variable names too long. Alrighty. Okay, one more, one more time. Okay, now where do we think the eclipse begins and ends? I don't think this will be any different, but sure. Maybe this will catch the annual eclipse. The January 19th, hey, that's only a little while away. Um, January 19th, uh, let's see if that's there's an eclipse here. Gosh, I hope there is. Um, no. January 19th, 
Um, wait. The angle of the umbers, if the angle of Q is this and the delta, there's no way that's even close. What the hell? Okay. If angle Q plus angle delta is greater than... Um, oh. Right. Right, right, right. So they both have to be between, one of them has to be between negative um angle and um angle, not strictly greater than or strictly, um, um, yeah. So if this number, the absolute value of this number is less than um angle, or the absolute value of this number is less than um angle, then we have an eclipse. I think. I don't know. I'm making stuff up at this point. All right. All righty. Now it looks like we may, may have gotten rid of every single eclipse in the world. Not cool. Nope. No. Nope, no. Nope, we have one. So let's see what this is. Saturday, July twenty. This might be our, our annular eclipse that we didn't. We were not catching earlier. Um. July 25th of 2020, and, um, yeah, nothing going on then. Oh, actually, this might be, um, hang on, that might, this might be the one after June, so it didn't quite show up yet. Um, July 4th to 5th, July 25th, there is absolutely nothing going on. All right, so how do we get there? The umbral angle is this. The, what the hell? The umbral angle is this. Angle Q is this. And plus or minus 58 degrees, nowhere near 0.26. So what, what the hell happened? Um, that's not cool. I mean, I realize we are using radiance, but I mean, that still shouldn't be an, an issue. Um, I mean, this seems correct for the umbral angle. This seems like a reasonable value. Uh, this seems like a reasonable value for angle Q and delta. So really, we're saying that the entire body Q is between 57.2 and 59.2. Um, both of whom's absolute value is much, much bigger than 0.26. So, what be going on here? I'd be asking. Angle Q plus angle Q minus angle Q delta. So the absolute value here... I'm suspicious. Um, and the umbral angle is... Yeah, it's given in, um, in radians. Um... Oh, and actually this should return negative 9999, but still. Um, if V norm um C is uh, greater than... Yeah, if the, the, the distance to the umbral point is greater than uh, the distance between P and T, uh, that means we're not close enough to be within the umbra. Hmm. Is it possible that... No, because we actually printed out here and it's not. Um, this is the umbral vector. This is the, um, like this, T. This is the umbral point. Now, the only thing I can think of here is, um, we have a pi minus in here somewhere. Um, that's pretty much up here, though. Okay. So this does not appear to be obeying our rules. I guess what we're going to have to do here is just print out the um, the three values. But I mean, this does not look like it should be an issue. Unless I made a typo or something somewhere. All right. Well, let's see what the hell this is about. Uh, oh. 
Yes, Delita. Delita, of course, is the uh, Roman goddess of stupidity. Oh, actually, that's a new error. So that shouldn't have had a problem. All right, let's do this one more time. Compilation and runation. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Okay. Alpha. Okay. So we have angle Q plus angle delta. Uh, absolute value is one. Is that less than point? No, it is not. Um, angle Q minus angle Q delta. Is that less than the umbral angle? Does not appear to be. Um, the only thing I can think of is my OR is not taking the correct precedence, so I have to do it like this. I have to do this condition or this condition. Never hurts to add parentheses, uh, but I'm becoming suspicious there's something more wrong here. So let's see what this does. Compiles. Run, 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 run. They do run, run, run. Better on a Monday and my heart stood still. Okay. Okay. If either of those is less than um angle, and um angle is positive, right? Yeah. Then do this. But if it's not which is going to be 99% of the time, return out of the thing and don't print anything. All right, well, you know, when in doubt, print F. So the umbral angle here, we're going to just now talk about the, um, I guess, angle Q plus angle Q delta. And then the only thing I can think of is maybe the absolute function isn't doing what I think it does. Although that is getting kind of, uh, kind of insane now. And we'll cut and paste this sucker. Uh, now I'm reaching for straws. I'm grasping at straws. Okay. Okie dokie. What the actual hell? So this is the umbral angle, right here. Tiny little thing. Good, good, good. And we're asking if either this number, absolute value, or the absolute value of this number, is less than that, do this. The, um, hmm. See, neither of these appear to be less than, um, this number. So what is going on here? Either that's less than this, or that's less than this. Okay, well, let's slap on some absolute values now. I guess we're going to get cranky about this. Maybe the word abs has a different meaning. I keep using that word. I do not think it means what I think it means. I mean, I think it does, but apparently uh, C++ doesn't like me, or C doesn't like me. Um... Since when did absolute value become an integer? Do I mean fabs floating point absolute value? I probably do. And this is another reason I hate C. Because, um, well that compiles, so I think I know what's going on now. I think of course I should be using fabs instead of absolute value, which apparently uh, returns an integer. So, um, yeah. And that also would explain why that, that suddenly becomes zero. So if we have fabs of this, or the fabs of that, then tell me it's an eclipse. Okay. And now hopefully we will have fewer errors. Or, or we won't get any output at all. That would be also really good. Okay. 
And December 14th at 1433, I think we've, this is the one we've done before. Um, yep, first location, see the full eclipse, blah, 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 blah. Um, so there's some question as to why it doesn't actually um, show us the annular eclipse, because in that case, we should also have it where the... Um, where the both of these conditions are actually true. Um, so let's see. Um, I guess what we want to look at here in terms of uh, how much of an eclipse there is. Um, Yeah, I think that, I think what we want to look at is why we're not catching the other eclipse here, why we're not catching the annular eclipse, um, because that should be, it's not total, but in the way we're defining the word total, it is. See if that's not confusing enough for you. Okay. Um, and so we should be getting these numbers here. So. Let's do this. Um, hmm. I don't really want to use a go-to. I want to kind of say that... Um, uh, man. What do I want to say? Um, do I really want to print it out for 525? I guess I could redirect it. It shouldn't be too bad. All right, so let's go ahead and um, not do any of this for right now. And then print up the whole goddamn thing and then see what it looks like for June 20th. This is going to be a mistake. This is going to be a... Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Nope, don't do that either. Do this. And this time... Um, let's time this sucker. Since it's writing to a file, it shouldn't be too much worse uh, than the time it took to, um, you know, only print certain things. Uh, and even as I say that, I can see that it's, wow, 13 seconds. Okay. So let's temp occultation, da da And we are now looking for the solar eclipse on June 21st of this year. So let's go ahead and get a date for that. Date minus D. And that's going to be this number in terms of seconds. Let's go over there. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Um, the umbral angle is this. The angle for Q is 111. And the delta angle is 15. Really? Um, hmm. So that's way off. Um. All right, let's see if we can put this sucker into the um, into the magical uh, three-dimensional thing that we had that we got rid of earlier. Um, come on, delete, die, you stupid point. Okay. Um, once again, it looks like Y and Z are our big things. So 0 0.93 and 0 0.40. So we're going to put, put a point right about there. And then our T-pause is really, really close to zero, but in the positive in all three directions. Uh, and therefore, in the Y and Z directions, it's like um, right there. Of course, the, um, the um, origin is right there. So this is... Um, S T, the umbral vector is 
Okay. Um, points from S to T. So it's it's this sucker here. Uh, that's the umbrella. I could actually draw it in because we kind of know what it is. Um, okay. All right. So you would think I would pay attention. Um, we're looking for solar eclipses, I'm almost sure. So we have um, the observer is going to be the Earth. That's the sucker here. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. The um, obscure is going to be the moon. And the light source will be as it normally is the sun. So this, this, is, this is correct. Yeah, this looks good. So here we have A, B. The umbral point is probably very, very close to here. Um, it is. Okay, good, good, good. The umbral point's right there. Um, and so the umbral point's very, very close. And I'm looking for the, oh, wow. So is the umbral cone not quite touching? Oh, yes, that's why. This is a very unusual situation. Because it's an annular eclipse, the umbral cone, in fact, won't touch the surface of the Earth. Because if it did, we'd have a total eclipse. The weird thing there is it means that the angle from here is actually really large because the umbral cone is, is, um, is outside of the Earth. It's not, it's not the, the angle. The umbral cone extends like this. And it's very far away from here. So that's actually sort of a bad thing that we have th that defined that way. Um, so let's go back to our diagram here. So what's happening here is point Q is right there. And it's not, and even the whole, you know, the whole sphere of Q isn't quite enough to touch P. So if we look at the angle here, that's a huge angle. It's a huge angle there between P and Q. It's essentially the negative, it's a, like a negative 180 essentially. Um, and let's see if we're seeing that. Um, it's 111. Okay, but it's it's still really, really large because, um, let's say the Earth's over here, and, and it's doing that. So I don't know if we want to compensate for that. Um, I mean, that, that actually is bad because it means that the, uh, the value of the umbral angle can change very quickly, uh, whether or not we're in an eclipse. So I'm not quite sure how to treat that. Um, I guess we could look at the minimum distance between um, a point on the sphere and P. That might not be the way to go, though. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, because we could have all sorts of cases where it, we're not in the umbral cone, uh, but the distance between P and Q is very close. So, um, did not fully think this through here as to how we want to do this. Um, if it's in here, definite umbral eclipse, no problem. And if it's out here somewhere, no umbral eclipse, no problem. If it's where the umbral cone were extended a little bit, you'd be inside of it. Um, that is sort of a problem. And I guess we could look at the vertical angles here and and if so you could also say if it's you know um between negative pt or yeah the angle with negative pt is also small that means you're um over here somewhere in I, and i guess that's more of a question for the penumbra so i guess i guess this is technically correct um because there's only so much we can do with the umbra um so let's leave that function the way it is get to the much more exciting question mark question mark um, penumbral case and we're just going to create a new function for this um, let's see make sure we don't already have one I don't think we do because I didn't really um, penumbral data and we're going to have it take the same sort of um, 
parameters. It's going to take a time and three planets, S, T, uh, given as integers. And I don't know if we're going to give it a val. We, we're just going to, I think, figure it out from here. Okay. So for the penumbral case, um, let's see, where is Q? So this is the penumbra, and we want to know whether uh, Q is somewhere within the penumbra. Any part of Q is within the penumbra. Okay, not too bad so far. So I guess the first thing we need to do is compute um, um, P, T, or S. I guess we want to compute point P. Uh, so we draw the vector from T to S. Let's see here. Uh, we know T and S, of course, so we can draw that vector T to S. Um, I guess the very first thing we should do is get positions of these things relative to um, relative to point Q. And there we will go ahead and use the um, eclipse around the world thing. So, um, are we going to need all three radii? We are going to need these two for sure. We will need the third one because that's going to determine what the uh, what the angular width is as observed from uh, the penumbral point. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Cut and paste code, never really a good idea, but we'll take it. And then we also need to compute the position of S, and so we're going to do this as well. Um, which kind of makes me wonder if we could sort of combine those into one function. Um, so, okay, now we have the positions of S and T. Now we're going to start doing some computations here. Um, so the vector from T to S, let's see. We are assuming, right, the penumbra is to the left side of S. Um, so we're assuming um, the vector from T to S is T plus Ooh, sorry. So if you're at t, you want to get to s, you need to go t plus s minus t. So this vector here is s minus t. t plus s minus t. Okay, that's s minus t. Um, actually, I'm doing think this is going to look a lot like the other one to the point where we might want to share code. Um, yep, the distance between s and t. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, this is going to be the uh, penumbral vector uh, in this case. It's going to point from S to S minus T, so it's going to point from T to S. It's going to point, it's going to be this thing. I mean, that's the direction of the vector. It's not going to, uh, we don't have a length yet assigned to it, but we will get to that in just a sec. Alrighty. Um, so, the only difference is we're going to call this the pen umbral vector, um, which is not very exciting. Okay, and the distance between S and T, we actually probably don't care right now. So we know what the pen umbral vector looks like. We need the length PT, for which we do need the distance between S and T. Um, but the nice thing is, that might be all we need. Let's see. Uh, yep. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Um, so now we can compute the distance from the penumbral point P from T to the penumbral point to the penumbral point P. And this, this, if this is the same formula, I'll be P ST times TR over SR plus TR. Yeah, this time it's a plus. Uh, ST times TR over SR plus TR. That gives us this length here, PT, so now we're going to add the, uh, the umbral vector modified to this length to T to get the point P. And so now we will say, um, 
Unfortunately, it's going to look very much like this, to the point where I'm beginning to really wonder if we could combine these. So this is again the penumbral point, but I'm beginning to think that doesn't really matter. So the penumbral point of um, i is going to be t pos i plus, because we are going in this direction here, we're going in this positive direction here, um, plus the st vector, which is the um vector i, um, over st times pt. So th almost the freaking same thing. But not quite. It is it is a plus because we're going to be to the right of 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 t pause. Okay. Um, and I have been streaming for an hour and five minutes, and I think I'm going to go ahead and call it for today. Apologies. We have uh, we can sort of see where this is going. Hopefully, um, did I say pen upload data? No, I think I did say pen upload. Right? I did I did spell it right? Penumbral data. Okay, so we can sort of see where we're going to go from here. We're going to, um, um, and we might just combine these into, um, you know, meta umbral data or something. Uh, so what we're going to be doing from here is we will be uh, computing the the point in P. We're then going to we've got to be careful here. We want to look at the um, we want to look at the angle between P. Damn it. Yeah, we, we, we're going to look at this angle here, which we do know. We That's angle 2, well, it's angle U here. Um, by vertical and symmet Vertical angles and symmet symmetry. And then we want to know what the angles are from here to the, uh, to the, to the, to the body Q itself. And then if it's within the penumbra, we have, we have a partial eclipse. All right, thank you for watching the stream, and I uh, wish I'd gone longer today, but not a bad first day of the year, decade. Uh, tomorrow we shall pick this up, I think. Thank you for watching.